Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video and joining me in this comparison of the 40XXV and the Miu Mini Plus. Right off the bat, let me say I realize how different these two systems are. But hey, I like comparing apples and oranges apparently. Why you may ask? Because I think that especially if you're new to the retro gaming scene, the choice is not always as clear as night and day. And this video is here to help you out with that if that's you. Also, I just love comparing devices and sharing the experience with others, so there's that too. But before we go any further, let me say that I think the 40XXV justifies its higher price tag compared to the Miu Mini Plus, as it has significantly more features and functionality. What are those? Well, watch on to find out. Please remember though that my videos are based off of research from various online sources and video reviews. It is not a hands-on comparison, but rather a concise detailed overview of these two popular handouts. If you find some value from it, can I kindly ask that you like, share and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out. With that said, let's consider the specs of these two units. The 40XXV packs a punch with its more powerful hardware, and has quite a few additional features, like the extra analog stick, Bluetooth, and a slightly larger battery. This is also one of the main reasons it is a bit more expensive. If it's not clear to you either, the 40XXV has a much more powerful processor, and more RAM that will allow you to play games on more demanding systems, but a bit more on that later. I'm not going to focus on these specs too much as the differences really come in in what they allow the system to do, but feel free to pause and look through them in detail in your own time. When it comes to ergonomics and design, it is basically comfort versus portability with these two. The 40XXV boasts a larger 4 inch screen, providing a more immersive gaming experience. The larger size allows for more comfortable button placement and potentially longer gaming sessions, especially if you're an adult with larger hands. On the other hand, the Miu Mini Plus lives up to its name with its more compact design. It has a 3.5 inch screen and a smaller overall footprint that makes it incredibly pocket friendly. This portability is a significant advantage if you want to game on the go. So if that's important to you, the Mini may be the better option. It would also work great as a gift for a smaller child as it would be more comfortable in their hands. But how do the controls compare, you may say? Here, Ambonik has shown clear improvements in the build quality and design with the 40XXV. The D-pad in particular has been praised for its responsiveness and accuracy, and reviewers like the feel of the buttons. The Mini has similarly good controls, but between the two, I think the 40XXV may be slightly better, if I look at the feedback that reviewers are giving at least. The trigger buttons at the back of the V are a slight bit too sensitive for many though, and apparently has resulted in accidental presses of the wrong button. This is partially due to how they are designed. On the flip side, I did not get the sense that this was a problem for anyone on the Mini, so keep that in mind. So it's clear that both devices offer unique aspects in the design, so things like what type of games you want to play and how and when you want to play them will play a big role here. When it comes to performance though, the V's more powerful hardware translates into better emulation performance, and it can handle systems like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and PS1 with ease. It will also play most of the N64 and Dreamcast catalog of games, but not all of them unfortunately. The analog stick will be particularly helpful with these, as many of the N64 catalog require it. It will also play some PSP games. This system is really the limit of what it is capable of, so heavier games require tweaks to the settings to be playable here. In most cases, the stock firmware on the unit or custom firmware from the community has it pre-configured, but just be aware that if you're not willing to tinker, your experience with it may not be great here. The Mini on the other hand will be great with any system up to PS1, but as far as I can see, any heavier systems are not within its capability. Let's move on and consider custom firmware then. If you don't know what that is, it is basically software or an operating system that is developed by the community, and in general, it adds awesome new features and makes the unit more user-friendly to use. Both of these have a wide variety of options. An example would be Onion OS for the Mini, which has been utilized and improved upon for quite a while now. This makes it one of the best options for the Mini. On the 40XXV, you have custom firmware options like Nuli, which gives you a graphical interface that looks awesome with brilliant themes and cover art to represent the games that you want to play. You can load these yourselves, but it is a bit technical. Lit NXT has an option to buy the Mini with Onion OS pre installed but it does make it almost three times the cost at around $99. So it would negate one of the main reasons why you would choose it over the 40XXV. For those of you that prefer the portability of the Mini though, and want it pre-set up, I will leave a link in the description. I couldn't find any options like this for the 40XXV at the moment, 
but the Nuli homepage has detailed instructions on how to install it. So if you want to take that route, I'll leave a link to that as well. So with all that said, let's do a quick recap of pros and cons to summarize and simplify what we've discussed. The 40XXV has a larger, more immersive screen. It has more powerful hardware that can handle better emulation. It also has additional features like HDMI out and Bluetooth, and it has a comfortable design for longer gaming sessions. On the downside, it has a higher price point and it is less portable than the MiU Mini Plus. The MiU Mini has an extremely portable design, and it has a lower price point and good performance for its size. But it has a smaller screen and it is limited to less demanding emulation with fewer features. I hope the before mentioned gives you a clear idea why the 40XXV would be my choice when comparing these two, even though it may cost double what the Mini does. I think there is a case to be made for the Mini, but only if portability is a huge huge factor for you and you mainly like playing games from the PS1 era and below. Of course this opinion is very dependent on my preferences and exactly what I would use the device for, so you may differ from me. If so, let me know in the comments what you think and why, I'd love to hear from you. If you want some more detail on the 40XXV or the MiU Mini Plus, you can click on the links on screen now for my video overviews on those. That's it for this one though. As always, have a nice day and I'll catch you in the next tech update.